looking good. What's up you guys? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the 300ZX and their fuel injector problems, issues, and what you can do to resolve these problems and what Nissan has tried to do over the years to resolve them themselves. We will go over the primary differences of the fuel injectors. We will go over the pros and cons as well as the typical failures and what causes those failures to happen in the side feed injectors and the benefits of switching over to the top feed fuel injector setup that is now offered on the market today, which uh, should be a no brainer, honestly, especially at the price point that you could potentially get into a set of top feed injectors for and the reliability of these over, let's say your typical side feed injector upgrade. If you have a 300ZX and you have not had an issue with your fuel injectors, count yourself lucky. Now, if you're not familiar with the 300ZX and their injector failure slash problems over the years, um, let's go ahead and familiarize ourselves with this real quick. Now, in 1989, the fuel that was being provided to your everyday fuel consumer did not have ethanol placed into it. As you know, today, up to 10% ethanol is in any kind of pump gas that you put into your car, whether it be 87, 89, 91, 93, it does not matter. Ethanol was pretty much the big change in fuel during the 90s that caused a lot of the early style injectors to fail because when they were creating these cars with that early style injector, uh, they didn't expect ethanol to be put into the fuel. And Nissan's answer to this was to basically update the injectors to a newer style injector. At this point, they were known as the, well, to some they're the newer style or pintle-less style injector. Does upgrading to a newer style pintle-less injector resolve these issues? Not necessarily. My personal opinion, and I'm sure many Z32 gearheads would probably agree with me, that just by upgrading to the pintle-less style injector doesn't mean you have a foolproof injector because, well, let's face it, the side feed injector is not a very efficient injector to begin with, just the sheer design of it and I've seen them brand new out of the box fail, not to mention all the aftermarket ones that are out there right now. Um, most of them are just junk. You know what, just for this video, I'm going to go pop off a side feed fuel rail off of one of my spare motors and uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I do it and how you can remove those side feed injectors from the fuel rail. Okay, so real quick, I'm over here, I'm at my spare motor. I'm actually going to uh, pull these injectors off and show you guys which injectors they are. Now, if I'm being honest, I'm fairly certain these are the new style injectors, so they should be the pintle list. As I remove them, I'll give you guys kind of a little, well, little tips and tricks on how to get this fuel rail out. Because realistically, it's easier just to remove the injectors with the fuel rail. So we got these screws right here, bolts, rather. So I'm just gonna take one of these injectors out because there's no reason in showing you every single one. It would just get repetitive at that point. So, just gonna unscrew it here. Okay, so once you have it set up in a vise or clamp of any sorts, whatever you might have on the edge of the table, basically what you wanna do is get like a seven or six millimeter uh, quarter inch chrome socket. Basically anything that'll fit over the top, just like that. Then you just take your hammer, you give it a good couple whacks. You can feel it start to come out and then you just grab it from below and catch it. Basically, you don't want the injector, as you can probably imagine, to come out and fall onto the ground. And that's it. It comes right out. You don't have to worry about breaking the plastic. You don't have to worry about wedging a screwdriver in there and shattering this 30-year-old plastic. It's very simple. It's the best way to do it. So that's my advice on how to get the injectors out the easiest way. Okay, guys, now that we got the fuel injector out of the head, if you look real closely, there's not really like an extension on the top. And if it had an extension, therefore it would be known as the pintle style. And because this has no extension, it's a little bit, uh, you can kind of call it stubbier. This is a pintle-less style injector is what it's commonly referred to or new style injector. Uh, this one here is actually missing. I believe some of them have like a little cap that goes over the top. And also obviously there's an O-ring that's supposed to sit around here. If you don't replace the O-rings, then you're gonna have fuel just straight dumping into the cylinder at all times, which is another big issue that I have with the side feed injector because the fuel goes in through this little screen right here and then comes out the bottom. Now, if any of the O-rings are missing from right here or right here, basically between the intake of the fuel and the outlet of the fuel at the injector, 
uh, it's just dumping fuel into the cylinder at that point because there's nothing holding it back. Now I've seen it before, well heard of it before rather, where these O-rings have blown out or failed or somebody forgot to put them in and they've actually hydro locked their engine and bent rods because the cylinder at that point is just filling with fuel. So essentially you just have a liquid substance in your cylinder and not only is it probably not firing right and running stupid rich, but let's say an O-ring blows out at wide open throttle, you then have fuel dumping into that cylinder and it will definitely bend the rod at that point. It's just like ingesting water except it's fuel and it's too much fuel and it won't ignite because there is too much. So, And from my understanding, what they do with a lot of these is instead of basically rebuilding, redesigning, CNC honing like the injector itself, all they do is drill out these little holes. If you look real closely, there's four little holes right there. I don't know if this will focus or not for you guys, but anyways, they basically take a very fine drill bit and drill out those holes to make whatever flow rate is desired. And that's pretty much how many of these companies design their fuel, rail, uh, fuel injectors. Now, typically these older side feed injectors, the contacts would rust out and corrode over time and fail, leaving them to be stuck open. And at the time when the car is then turned off, you have a switch that is then stuck open and it would just basically drain all the fuel out into the cylinder. So the next time you go to start the car, you would have to then crank the car over until it pushes all that fuel out of the cylinder and uh, then it might be able to start. I actually dealt with this personally for several months back when I first got the car and I wish I knew back then what I do now because back then, if I would have known that the top feed fuel rail conversion was a good option and a way better option, I would have just gone ahead and gone with that because my God, look how beautiful that looks. We're gonna switch over to the top feed fuel conversion here in a minute, but first I wanted to finish discussing the side feed injectors and well, their failure points because there are a couple different ones that can happen. And I already told you one of them, mainly being the electrical contacts that get stuck closed and drain fuel into the cylinder. The other option is, uh, well, the contactors stay open or they just degrade and fall apart altogether, meaning the contacts don't actually close, meaning the fuel injector never opens. And then you just have a dead injector. Either way, you either have a stuck closed or a stuck open injector and fuel is either constantly dumping into the cylinder or not getting into it at all because it's not opening at all. Now, there has been some speculation online over the years as to a fuel pump uh, 12 volt mod, let's say, because somebody somewhere along the lines found out that, well, the injectors constantly saw 12 volts, even when the car was turned off. And the way to get around that is to basically rewire it such that the injectors obviously lose 12 volt once the car is turned off and gain 12 volt once the car is turned back on. I've never personally done that, honestly. I've never really found the need to. I just thought, well, if the injectors are failing, they need to be changed regardless. Realistically, when the car is in an on state, the injectors are always seeing 12 volts anyways, so it's not that big of a deal. Now, when you upgrade from the old style to the new style injectors, yes, you get a much better injector, but there are still issues. I have seen them fail right out of the box. Even the AUS injectors, Oz injectors, whatever you wanna call them, they fail right out of the box. I've not had good luck with them. The only real option, well, my opinion anyways, to a side feed injector, a good quality side feed injector is the Nismo side feed injector. But in today's day and age, the issue with the side feed injectors at the end of it all is that they are just not efficient. They're not a good injector, especially if you wanna make anything more than like five, 600 horsepower, especially once you start switching over to ethanol. And it's not necessarily that the ethanol is gonna ruin the injectors, it's more so with the amount of ethanol that needs to be injected into the cylinder to make the kind of power you want with that kind of fuel. What I'm getting at here is ethanol requires a 30% more fuel mixture than regular pump gas. So let's say you need a 700 cc to make 700 horsepower on pump gas. To do 700 horsepower with the 85, you need roughly a thousand cc injector to make equal power. Sometimes you can do a little bit more. It really depends on the motor, but general rule of thumb for the six cylinder, that's what I go by. When I say that the side feed injector is extremely inefficient, what I mean by that is typically side feed injectors struggle to maintain a steady input pressure from the fuel rail. Now, 
regardless, you can have a top of the line fuel pressure regulator. It's just the way the fuel flows into the, into the injector and back out of it. It's just not a very efficient setup and it's very inconsistent, leaving a very inconsistent spray pattern. Now, typically with a better spray pattern from an injector, you normally get better atomization of the fuel and a better fuel mixture with the air as it's being sucked into the cylinder on the intake stroke. The bigger the injector, the harder it is to dial in, let's say your idle or your light throttle tune because the bigger injector struggles to open those fine increments that a smaller injector uh, would basically prevail at. That's why you don't see 2000 cc injectors being shoved into a six cylinder from the factory. But I will say with today's technology, you can pretty much do that and not have a worry in the world with the way your idle will function. Now, the only person that might notice it is probably the tuner themselves because they might look at it and say, oh, this idle isn't that great and it's actually unnoticeable to most people. However, with a 750cc injector, it very well may have a similar spray pattern to that of, let's say, a 1600cc top feed fuel injector which is crazy because that means you can have an injector that's twice the size and have just as good fuel control as you would on a side feed injector. There are also plenty more factors that go into this such as battery voltage and the way the battery voltage allows the injector to open and close because with the bigger injector, you typically require more voltage to open and close that injector. Smaller injector, you don't need much battery voltage to open and close it, which is why on a lot of bigger injector cars, might struggle a little bit and you might need a little bit more battery voltage to start the car. So that pretty much leaves us with the top feed fuel injectors. And the reason you would want to switch to them, which are pretty much already listed here, is because they have so much better fuel atomization, so much better spray patterns that are just way more efficient than your typical side feed injector. Now, realistically, most people nowadays only use two different brands of side feed injectors that I'm aware of anyways. And that's gonna be the AUS and the Nismo side feed injector. However, you switch to a top feed fuel injector, there are a ton of different options and you can get them for rather cheaply too, might I add, not to mention the cheaper top feed injector will flow better and more precise than your expensive side feed injector ever will. And I have the perfect example of this because my first set of top feed fuel injectors were some basic Bosch EV14, and I believe the EV6 is very similar, fuel injectors. And you can buy these used, they're commonly put in a lot of Ford vehicles. I believe mine came out of like a, a Mustang or Shelby or something, something along those lines. Basically, I got an entire set of six fuel injectors for about 200 bucks. Were they used? Yes. But I felt way more comfortable buying a used set of top feed fuel injectors, sending them off to get flow tested and putting them in my car then buying a new set of side feed injectors. No matter which injector you get, just make sure the dimensions are correct for the top feed fuel rail conversion that you get. Because as you know, with the 300ZX, there are different top feed fuel rail conversions that you can get, which is what I'm gonna get to right now. The top feed fuel rail conversion on these cars has a below plenum and an above plenum setup. The above plenum setup, like I said, typically sits above the intake manifold and the below plenum sits below the intake manifold or intake plenum, whatever you would like to call it. So on my kit, I am running the Fuel Injector Clinic 1650cc fuel injectors with the Merlin uh, below plenum top feed fuel rail conversion. Now with this kit in particular, you have to send him the core of your lower intake manifold and he will send you back one that's been slightly modified with bosses in it to fit these injectors. As for the Polar Engineering one, I believe he sends you out little adapter kits that'll go right in to your factory lower intake manifold. You just have to tell him which intake manifold that you have. Just read the directions and follow the directions on their website. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you how to do that. One other important thing I need to mention here for the top feed fuel injectors is that the majority of them are actually all made by Bosch. Now, let me clarify this because there are some uh, fine details here. Injector Dynamics, Fuel Injector Clinic, I know are, in my eyes anyways, they're the two big fuel injector companies. So both of those companies are both made, or start out as a Bosch injector. They're made by Bosch and refined by those companies in particular. Bosch, however, gets proprietary injectors delivered to them. And what 
fuel injector clinic does is they group injectors based on size and flow characteristics uh, into a batch. Now I'm sure I'm missing some fine details here and to be honest I'm not totally sure what makes the injector dynamics injectors proprietary. I'm sure there's other videos out there you can look more into detail on those but personal opinion I've always had fuel injector clinic injectors and they've worked great for me but most companies when they offer the top feed fuel oil conversion will offer typically injector dynamics injectors. And you're probably watching this video right now and saying, but Billy, the top feed fuel injector setup is so expensive. It's like $500 just to get the fuel rail. Yes, yes, it is like that much just to get the top feed fuel rail conversion. However, if you can find a set of used Bosch EV14 1000 CC injectors like I did for two to 300 bucks, you're sitting at maybe $50 to $100 more than if you would have bought the top of the line 750cc Nismo injectors, which I believe are probably like $850 right now, maybe closer to $900. They're getting really expensive and they are not that great of an injector. The Nismo injector is reliable. Yes, I'll give it that. However, it still suffers the same fate that every other side feed injector on the market does. Now there are also the other option, which is the above plenum top feed fuel rail. And the above plenum setups include the Brett Dempsey Engineering, which I also had before on my stock intake manifold. And that was a great kit. My only problem with it was every time I went to pull my intake manifold, fuel would pour out of the fuel injectors and fuel rail um, every time I went to pull the intake manifold to do my spark plugs because I had the R35 coil packs installed which sit beneath the intake manifold it was a big process basically get your entire setup to match the coil setup is my personal recommendation so if you have a below plenum uh, fuel rail you can get the below plenum r35 gtr coil packs but if you get the above plenum fuel rail definitely definitely get the above plenum coil packs but I hope you guys got something of value out of this video. If you did, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, help out the algorithm. Let's make this channel blow up 2024. Uh, we got a couple months left in the year. I really wanna hit the 10,000. All I need is like probably one video to blow up. We'll see what happens here. But coming up, we've got boost control, anti-lag. I got Hikus Delete I'm gonna do. And then we are also going to FL2K. So if you'd like to see any of that, be sure you're subscribed and we'll catch you next time. Take care.